Okay, hi, so welcome to this uh, the video on parallel circuits. Now, in this video, we're going to have a look at parallel circuits and how we do calculations with those. If you haven't seen my previous video on series circuits, then please do go and have a look at that first, right? Because I'm going to assume that you know how to work with series circuits uh, in this video. Parallel circuits are slightly different, but it's better to know how to use series circuits uh, to start with. Okay, so let's dive straight in. And here is a very, very simple parallel circuit, right? So what you have in a parallel circuit is um, your power supply. Well, that's always going to be there, right? In this case, it's a cell, could be a battery. And we have two components, right? Uh, which are connected in parallel to each other, not in series with each other. And by that, I mean that uh, electrons from the power supply are going to, or through the wire, I'm going to go through here. Okay, and then if you have a look at this point here, this is what we call a junction. Okay, and at that junction, electrons have a choice where they go. They can either go this way, right, through the bulb, out, and then back, okay? They can't go that way. Can't do that, right? So they can either go that way and back, or at this junction, they could carry on and go this way and go through the other bulb and go back. So what's really happened is your electrons have split, right? It's like there's a path, there's like a fork in the path, and the electrons can decide, hmm, I'm going to go this way, or no, I'm going to go the other way, right? Uh, that means, because if you think about the definition of current, current is the flow of charge or the flow of electrons, right, in a circuit. So the current is not going to stay the same, right? So current, uh, let's write this over here, current does not remain constant. Okay, it doesn't remain constant. So the current will actually split. And that is different. Uh, let me just rub this out so, so you don't get confused. Uh, that is different to a series circuit. Because in a series circuit, the current or the electrons have no choice of where they go, which makes the current remain constant as all the electrons are going in the same uh, path. There's no choice of path. However, if you think about, if there were a load of people traveling down a road, okay, and you have that amount of people all the way down this straight road, that's like um, representing the current. If then there's a fork in the path, and half the people went one way, and half the people went the other way, then your current on each side has gone down because you have less people, right? Same kind of analogy with your electrons. They have a choice of where to go, and so the current will actually split. It's not always 50-50, right, as we'll see when we look at calculations, uh, but it can be 50-50. All right, what else is different? Well, the voltage, okay, so the voltage... Uh, is constant okay across parallel components okay and what do I mean by that basically right let me just get rid of some of these arrows because they're kind of getting in the way there we go and there we go so if I took the I use a different color just not to confuse it with uh, your electrons. If I took the voltage across this bulb and the voltage across this bulb, right, and let's pretend that my power supply was giving six volts um, of power, right? Um, your voltage across each is six volts. And that is certainly different to a series circuit as well, because in a series circuit, the voltage is split, right? So the potential difference uh, across all the components add up to give the voltage. Uh, from the power supply. However, this time they don't, and you can sort of tell. You can tell why if you think about it uh, in literal terms. So, like your voltage, if you remember from previous videos, we said was the amount of energy you give to each electron, right? And in a series circuit, let me just draw a really quick one over here, right? In a series circuit, if you've got bulb and then another bulb. Sorry for how messy this is, by the way, but I, I want to do this quick. Let's say you have two bulbs like that. Right, as your electrons are traveling through this circuit, okay, they have a certain amount of energy as given by the power supply. Then the first bulb uses some of that energy, right? And so by the time the electrons come out the other side, they have less energy than they had to start with. And then they go through the second bulb and that uses the rest of the energy. And then they go back and it all continues as a cycle. However, in a parallel circuit, you can see that the electrons here, okay, 
They haven't gone through any bulbs yet. But then they have a choice of where to go. And they only go through either this bulb or this bulb. Which means that they haven't had any of their energy taken out of them. Which means that all of them will have that full 6 volts. Okay, Which means that the electrons going through each bulb are going to have the same um, amount of energy. Which gives you the same potential difference across each component. Alright, I hope that made sense. Now lastly, the resistance. Okay, now the resistance is more complicated. Right, and there are a few rules uh, that you can use to work out resistance. Okay, but it's always easiest to just calculate the resistance from the other two. Okay, resistance, calculate from um, voltage and current. Okay, and you'll see what I mean when we go through a worked example, uh, which we're going to do right now. All right, so what we're going to have a look at is this circuit here. Let me just move across. There we go. So you have this circuit, you have a power supply which is supplying 12 volts, and what we have is two resistors, okay, placed in parallel this time. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, my usual equation as I do for series circuits, which is voltage equals current times resistance. However, this time I'm not working out the total, okay? Reason being, we don't have enough information at the moment to work out the total current or the total resistance, okay? Because the resistances do not add up like they do in a series circuit, okay? And maybe I should have said that earlier, um, and that's why I said resistance was complicated. So if I just go up here, okay, calculate from voltage and current, okay, they do not add uh, add up, okay. So just like in series, where it's like if you've got a three ohm resistor and a six ohm resistor in series, that makes nine ohms. Not the case in parallel, as we'll see, right? What I'm doing this for, okay, the V equals I times R is each separate component, right? So voltage here and voltage here, okay. Now remember, I said that the voltage. Okay, does not split this time, it's the same across both, which means that this would read 12 volts and this here would read 12 volts. Okay, I'm going to start off with the first resistor, so this one here. And I know for a fact that across that resistor you have 12 volts of potential difference or voltage. That is equal to the current times by our resistance, okay, which in this case, because we're doing separate components, is just the resistance of that uh, resistor, which is three. Okay, so 12 is equal to current times three. I divide both sides by three, and I'll get that four, uh, four amps, that is, is equal to our current. Okay, so if we put an ammeter here, okay, the current going through this branch is four amps. Now, I'm going to, let me just separate that. I'm gonna do it again for the second resistor down here. V equals I times R. Voltage again is 12, okay? Is equal to current, which I'm finding, okay? Times by resistance, okay? And resistance of this one is six. All right, <clears throat> now to get current on its own, I divide both by six, and I'll get that two amps is equal to the current, right? So through this branch, okay, all over here, etc., etc. that is two amps worth of current, and through here, is four amps worth of current. Makes sense because this branch has less resistance, which means that more current is likely to go through it, right? It's not fighting the current as much as this branch, which has more resistance, right? Now, let me just um, separate that off again, like so. In, If you think about the current, right? You have electrons going like this and electrons going like this in this branch. And then at this junction here, Okay, at that junction there, that's where they meet. And so then here, they both have met, and so you have the total current. Just like here, they haven't branched off yet, and so you have the total current, right? And the total current is just one branch and another branch meeting, and so you add them up. So if I wanted to work out the total current, okay, I, T for total, that is equal to the individual currents of each, um, branch. And so we've worked both those out, which makes 4 amps 
plus 2 amps, giving us a total current of 6 amps. All right, let me just write in total current like so. So your total current is 6 amps. All right, now lastly, remember I said that resistance is a bit more complicated. Now, it's not complicated now because I've worked out enough to just be able to, to solve it. But what if I wanted to work out the total resistance in this circuit, okay? The massive mistake would be to say it's 9 ohms because it's definitely not 9 ohms, right? Uh, the total resistance in a parallel circuit is always going to be less than or the same as the smallest resistance of any of the resistors placed in parallel. And you'll see what I mean. If I now set up a total equation, so voltage total equals current total times by resistance total. All right, now don't be confused and say that the total voltage is this 12 plus this 12, because remember that's potential difference across each component, which is the same as the total voltage, right? Because it hasn't been split up. So your total voltage is the one from the power supply. That's 12 volts. That's equal to, well, the total current, I've already worked out. It's the sum of the currents in the two branches. And that makes 6 amps times by our total resistance. Right? Now, if I divide both sides by 6, I'll get resistance on its own. And that gives me that 2 ohms is equal to total resistance. And if I compare these, remember I said it will be smaller than or in some special cases the same as the smallest resistor. Well, we have 6 ohms here and we have 3 ohms here. 2 ohms is smaller than both, which means that even though we have a 3 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor, our total resistance throughout that whole circuit is 2 ohms. Okay? And so obviously that's smaller than the individual resistances. All right, and that's everything. So in order to <clears throat> solve a parallel circuit, look at each component separately first because we know the voltage. The voltage has just split. Um, sorry, not split. The voltage is the same as the power supply. Okay, and so each component is going to have that same voltage. Right, and then we can work out the current uh, through each branch. Then we can work out the total current of the whole circuit, and then we can work out resistance. So, I'm going to give you one more example, which you can have a go at on your own, and then I'll go through it really quickly. All right, so let's have a look at this last example. Okay, so here we go. Now, you have a parallel circuit here. Remember, this is actually three cells put together, and I've said that each cell is a 5-volt cell, right? So this is a battery. Now, what you want to work out is your total current through this whole circuit and your total resistance. Right, so pause the video now and try and have a go, and then I'll go through the solution very quickly. All right then, I hope you had a go at that. So, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna say that the total power supply is therefore 15 volts, right? That means that across each one of these components, okay, I'm not gonna draw the voltmeter just so it doesn't get cramped. So each component actually has 15 volts across it, right? Because remember, they don't share. They have the same voltage as the power supply. Right, so now uh, I'm going to have a look at them separately. So the first one, V is equal to IR. Remember, these are not total values. The total values will come at the end, but I need to work out the separate ones first. And so I'm going to have a look at this first resistor. So 15 volts is the potential difference across it, is equal to the current, which I don't know, times by the resistance, which I'm told is 3 ohms. Okay, so now I divide both sides by 3, I get that 5 is equal to the current, okay, uh, and that is of course in amps, right? So here, if I put an ammeter here, then it would have read 5 amps. Yep, an ammeter would obviously just look like so. All right, now the next one, I'm going to say this resistor here, 15 volts, same thing, is equal to current, which I don't know, times by the resistance of this resistor, which is 5 ohms. Divide both sides by 5, and I'll get that 3 amps is equal to the current here. Right? So that's 3 amps. 
All right, so basically, your current here is three amps, your current going through here is five amps, and so when they meet and they go back, they add up, okay? So you have a total current. So for A, total current, yeah, or I total is equal to the sum of the individual currents, which is five amps plus three amps equals eight amps. All right, cool. Now, lastly, what I can do is I can solve the total resistance. So for B, total resistance, now I'm going to use the total voltage and the total current. So voltage total is equal to current total times by resistance total. All right. Now the total voltage is the one coming from the power supply, which is of course 15 volts is equal to, I've just solved the total current. Total current is eight uh, amps, right? Times by total resistance, which is the one that I don't know. So to get resistance on its own, I need to divide both sides by the number in front of it, which is eight. So divide by eight. Okay, divide by eight, and you can use a calculator for this one because it's not a whole number, but 15 divided by eight is actually one and seven eighths, which is gonna give me 1.875 equals our total resistance. The units of that are of course ohms, okay? So you can see again the point that I made before that your total resistance is very likely gonna be less than the resistance of each individual resistor. Each individual resistor in this case is three ohms and five ohms respectively. Your total resistance is 1.875, which is of course less than both, right? And that is that question done. Okay, so I hope that's helped or and made everything clearer for you. If you do have any questions on that, then please do feel free to get in touch by writing a comment below or sending me a direct email. However, please do like and subscribe as usual because it really does help me out. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you in the next video.